Three shows are rough, though. But you that, know, those you are, know. Whew. Love the game. We do it for gotta the fans. Get, and gotta get going. Let's make sure simulcast is up and running. About to call out the Warrior win of the season. Yeah, we're into it. So let's let's get into it. Right. Hold on, hold on. Um, before we do price picks segment or just prize picks today. What do you want to do? Just the picks. Okay. We'll do the segment on Thursday. Cool. Cool. Yep. Three weeks. Appreciate everyone joining us. Big show today, presented by Prize Picks. Promo code Light Ears. Hundred dollar match on your first deposit, guys. You're gonna want to sign up for Prize Picks. They're giving you free money, hundred dollars. For your first play, you could be like Andy and I, just winning left and right, winning more often than the Warriors. Although, not tonight. Tonight, Warriors' biggest win of the season, maybe? 104-100 over the Dallas Mavericks. Let me preface it real quick by saying, this puts them three games over the Houston Rockets. In some ways, uh, it, it dulls the excitement over Thursday's game. But I think I speak for everyone when I say that's okay. <laughs> I didn't need the I didn't need the stress of a 10th place game falling out of the play-in game sure. on Thursday. Uh, you know what? A really nice fifth win in a row, a win at home against maybe the hottest team in the West. And just the team I thought I was gonna see. Most of the year we saw tonight. The team I saw the first week of the season we saw tonight. I'll let you take it away. Big, big fucking win. By far the best win of the season. Uh, They exercised a lot of the demons that I thought that they struggled with this year. Uh, You're right. Uh, um, I just to shout out the number one thing that I that I thought was amazing. The defense, Mm -hmm. man. The defense was incredible tonight. To me, it always feels. I mean, how long have we freaking done this? Him like a decade. And to me, it's always been the best games I've ever watched from this team starts with how good they are on defense. I don't really care if this team wins a game 135 to 125. It's not a serious team. It's not real basketball. It's fake. If they're going to want to win a playoff game or two or three or four or maybe two playoff series, I don't know. Serious. God forbid. Yeah, exactly. If they want to win a playoff series, it starts with what they did tonight. Uh, 100 points, which is just kind of end game. Like the Mavs scored 100 points and a couple bullshit ones at the end. But they they did what they always do. They let Luca get his because nobody stops Luca. They let Kyrie get his because not nobody really stops Kyrie. And really, no one else did a thing outside of I mean PJ Washington at 20 shots on 20 on 19 20 points on 19 shots. But other than that, nobody did a thing, and that is classic Steve Kerr defensive game plan, and it worked to perfection. So I was. I mean, I was elated. I thought everyone was great. Steph was amazing on defense. I thought Pods was amazing on defense. Wiggins, we'll get to him, amazing on defense. I just think the personnel that they're throwing out there right now makes sense. The starting five is a really good defensive starting five, so we'll just start there. But other than that, you throw GP2 in there. You throw Chris Paul, who played some pretty good defense. I was surprised. Some pretty good defense on Kyrie tonight. Was that Chris Paul's best game? And now I'm just going on and on. But just that's it, the defense. Best game of the season, best defense of the season. I can play with this. This I could roll with all year long. It does. And it does feel like the ref swallowed the whistles, which has been kind of a thing people have been talking about since the all-star break. Uh, We've all seen the articles from our guys, Tom Haberstro, Ethan Strauss. There there does seem to be this change in the way the league's officiating post all-star break. And I think it benefits the Warriors. I I, I Mm. think it's, I think it's funny because people always associate associate this team with shooting an offense when in fact, and Steph didn't shoot the ball well tonight, neither did Clay. Uh, this team would rather kind of get in the mud and trust that they're going to hit more shots than you if it's a dirty game, if it's an ugly game, physical, than the other way around. That's always kind of been their 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 thing. They don't have a lot of offense. They haven't had a lot of offense the majority of this run, even the KD years, it was kind of three dudes in defense. Uh, and when they're right. allowed to defend, I, you know what? Like, I'll take a single possession game with this team if you can actually defend. I thought Draymond, yeah. in my opinion, Draymond was the best player on the floor tonight. Play the uh, game. He quarterbacked everything, but Wiggins was phenomenal. Yeah. Best game of the season for him both yeah. ways. 
GP2, you know, I, I've been disappointed with him <laughs> for the majority of his return. Mostly he just hasn't been available enough, right? Yeah. Yep. But tonight, this was like the guy that helped them win a title two years ago. Yep. And to your point, you can go down the line. I just thought defense down the line. <clears throat> Ugly game. But I like like you. I like seeing them win ugly games. I like seeing just adversity and if they're gonna be tough enough to to fight through it. Yeah, these these are the these are the type of games that I think are real postseason. Look, I'm not we're not gonna sit here and say like this is what makes a title contender. We know what makes a title contender, we know what makes the Warriors a title contender. But Mm -hmm. when the Warriors play like this, I'm just like, man, like that's that's real. That's who they've been. The strength and number stuff is true because Steph had a stinker tonight, five for 18. Mm-hmm. But you look down the line. I mean, we call we can basically call Chris Paul strength and numbers, but like he had 14. Moses Moody somehow can shoot threes again. He's just amazing from three now, which is kind of what we expected him to be, right? And then I think to cap it off, you say back to 2022, you say GP2. Yeah, man, Andrew Wiggins. He, I think he thought it was 2022 tonight because he saved some bacon there in the third quarter. And then I don't know, like the guy, the guy's been awful on touch all season. And tonight he's just pulling from mid range. He has a couple push shot one handers that are just money right over Daniel Gafford, which who's a, an elite shot blocker. So um, defense and strength of numbers. We sound like Steve Kerr. Like I bet you Steve Kerr's in the locker room right now, just the full fist pump meme is steve kerr do you think he's happier about this game than he is if if steph went out there and dropped 42 tonight <laughs> yeah because it's, a win, it's right? a, that's yeah. sustainable they play yeah. they play kind of shitty defense but steph bails him out like right. Right. this is the type of game he wants to see i, I was thinking about this you, have you noticed how every game for the last at least two months first possession is a uh, play for wiggins <laughs> whether it's a post up or Steph screening for him, like trying to get him going, <clears throat> trying to get him engaged. Uh, classic coaching strategy. If you have a guy who's talented but kind of aloof, you're like, well, let's let's get him going so he's into the game, right? And I I kind of was thinking about it. I wonder if a more physical game is almost more beneficial for him too, like him being able to play defense on Luca, him not being worried that if he contests a single shot, it's going to be uh it's going to be, you know, free throws, sure, like, yeah. and, which is really frustrating if that doesn't lead into it, because like offensively, he was, he's always going to be a little bit of more of a grab bag than you want. There's always going to be a couple of those soft finishes where you're like, Oh, come on, man. But with him, for me, it's just like, just keep going. Don't like get, in your head or disengage over one bad possession. And I thought tonight was by far his best game of season. And like, I can get behind that kind of player. Yeah, that we saw yeah. Tonight, you know? yeah, that was, that was, I mean, the Warriors best game, but you're right. That was Wiggins, best game um, of the season. It just, uh, you got to remember, I mean, I know everybody listening tonight on playback right now uh, and, and going to be listening tomorrow. You got to remember this team beat, this Mavs team in the Western Conference Finals, right? Like not the same yeah. team. They had Jalen Brunson. Put put Jalen Brunson in, and 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 take out Kyrie and and, and stuff. But kind of the same stuff. And you're kind of seeing what Luca is. I think Luca's Luca's probably a much better player than he was a couple of years ago. But for the Warriors, the, the stuff remains the same, right? Like you can mm. score enough on this Mavs team. Like go go scroll down on this box score and see what the Warriors shot today. Because I swear they were shooting 50-40. Right from the field. Okay, so they missed a, a couple of shots there in the fourth quarter, but they shot they shot forty seven percent from three, fifteen threes, forty forty five percent for the throws. Yeah, we're gonna ignore that because that was bullshit. Forty five percent of field. They were actually shooting fifty until the last couple of minutes because you know Warriors in crunch time. You know how that goes. But like they can score enough on this Mavs team. It it really is. How good are they going to be against um against against Luca and, and Kyrie? And I thought they did a fine job. I mean, Luca's been the guy. The, you know, the comments are kind of comparing him to Harden, kind of putting up just easy 40, easy 35 a game. He's felt a like he better. worked for it. Felt yeah. like he worked for it. Is he a lot better? We'll see. We'll see. I've already I, – I will side with Luka because what he did to the Phoenix Suns two years ago in the playoffs – Yeah, that's true. Immediately supersedes true. anything James Harden's ever done in the playoffs. Not to say that the overall flaws are not the same. But, you know, 
I'll give him a little credit for that one. At least Harden, mm-hmm. yeah, I, I think that's right. That's that's a signature moment, but is that like a Damian Lillard signature moment in the playoffs? Time, where, where, time will tell. Right? Yeah, exactly, right? <laughs> exactly. So I, I, I forgot about that. That was pretty funny. Um, anyway, best game, best game of the year, man. That was fun. It's a hell of a game. It is. And uh I want to focus on the refs just a little bit here because okay. it does it does feel like it's a different NBA when they, they swallow their whistles a little bit there. Does it feel <clears throat> like this is sustainable for the Warriors going forward? Cause right now they're at 41 and 34. I think it's hilarious. They're in the 10 seed. They're going to finish with a better record than they finished last year. And it doesn't really feel that much better. Are they a better team? Does, 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 does this they are a better does, team. Okay. Okay. They, I think that, I think they're a better team, but they they're just being a better team and being good enough, and they're probably yeah. still not good enough. Yeah, you know good point. I mean? yeah, good point. I, I I think I think they're a better team, but yeah, barely. Which is, I mm-hmm. think, I agree with you. Which is saying the same thing you are. Um, kind of you you want to talk about the the rules? I, let me let me throw this at you because I, I agree that I like the rules. Let me ask you this: Is it hurting Steph? These rules. Ooh, that's an interesting question. Maybe we should talk about that after. It's done. And the Light Years Podcast, we, after the game of season, are brought to you by Price Picks. Price Picks is America's number one fantasy sports app with more than 3 million members. It is the easiest and most exciting way to get in on the action while you watch your favorite sports and players. You just pick more or less on two or more player stats and watch the winnings roll in. Uh, you can now win up to 100x your money on Price Picks with as little as four correct picks. You can turn ten dollars into a thousand with NBA, NHL, and college basketball entries. Just a couple games left. Final four on Price Picks, America's number one fantasy sports app. Conference tournaments uh, long gone, but Final Four is here, which means the biggest moments in hoops, in college hoops, women's and men's, uh, are getting closer. Be a part of the action on Price Picks uh, for both Final Fours. Uh, if you want to play alongside some of the prize fix favorite players like Meek Mill and Sugar Sean O'Malley, one of the best fighters out there right now, you can now find community plays under the promos tab of the app uh, to view entries from some of the biggest names in the prize pick community each week. Prize picks even offers injury insurance so that your entries stay in play, even if uh, one of your players gets injured for basketball games. If you have a player who en- exits the game in the first half and does not return in the second, prize picks will have your back and not count that as a loss. Download the app today. Use code LightYears for a first deposit match up to $100. Download the app today. Use code LightYears for a first deposit match up to $100. Pick more, pick less. It is that easy. And we, LightYears Podcast, are brought to you by GameTime. GameTime is the only ticketing app that gives you complete peace of mind with your purchase. See the view from your seat before you buy so you know exactly what to expect when you arrive. All in prices, show your total up front. So you know you're getting a great deal before you check out. Buy tickets in seconds with two taps. Uh, Game time has deals on tickets uh, right up to the start of the event and even hour after it starts. It's the place to find last-minute seats. Uh, Find exclusive flash deals and sponsored deals on tickets for football, basketball, baseball, concerts, comedy, theater, and more. With zone deals, you pick the section. Game time picks the seats for big-time savings. And the game time guarantee means you'll always get the best price. If you find tickets in the same section and roll for less, game time. Will credit you 110% of the difference. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use code LightYears for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account, uh, redeem code L I G H T Y E A R S for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Nice, nice. So let me take you back to your question. Does the new rule interpretation or what we interpret as a change in officiating, is that hurting Steph? Is that hurting Steph Curry? Steph had a rough night tonight, five for 18 from the field. Uh, Felt like he never really got going. He didn't really get going. His numbers suggest that. Also, if you watch the game, suggested that. Uh, The numbers I'm putting up right now, these are Steph's numbers post-All-Star break. They don't reflect tonight. Tonight's not going to help these numbers. 41% 41% from the field since the all-star break. Yeah. 35.5% from three since the all-star break. I guess there's three things one can consider. 
Is it the new ref interpretation? Is he just aging? Or is it the roster? So I want I want to I'm turn the question on you, Oof. Andy Lou. Which of those three do you think is the biggest factor? And just before we get to Andy's answer, oh. I want to say we're taking callers right after this. Oh man, I you've given me the options that I think I know the one that I want. But the but it's such a great night that I think it hurts. And Steph's gonna go, he's gonna go 15 for 25 from three the next the next two games. And and I'm gonna sound crazy, but I do, I do think, I do think a lot of it is he is getting older and he is tired. I think that's more of it than the rules. I think it's more of it than the roster because some, some of this stuff is, is, I think he's just exhausted, man. And why is he exhausted? He's just older. I mean, he just, he's, he's 36 and, and, and he's not playing that many minutes, but you got to get up and play these games. So I don't think it's a matter of, oh, he's sitting two minutes here, he's sitting two minutes there. I don't think that's actually hurting them. It's that they're traveling and they're playing every other night. And I think that's the stuff that's wearing him down. He got hurt a couple weeks ago. He came back from that injury. I just think it's a lot for a guy that's not a 6'10 dude, right? He just he's not like he's just not that size. And he's already on the older side. So I think there's a decent chance that he's gonna he's gonna get hot and do his thing again. I'm just saying. This is just what happens when you're older. Like it's not, it's not really slender. It, it, I just think this is what happens. And in times like these are gonna stretch he, longer than we admit. Wow, you think he sucks. Admit. You think he sucks? That's fucking, I think it's more fuck, that than fucking offensive, people, man. Nah. People, were like, people were like, the rules, the rules. That's why I asked you. Like, or it's like other stuff. It's like, I don't, it's not the rules. It's not he just, I mean, yes, he should have gotten three foul calls tonight. He should have gotten six more points, six free throws, right? But Mm -hmm. Just it just you know give give him a week off he's gonna come back he's gonna look amazing right but he can't take a week off he can't take a week off because they're fighting for tenth place that's that's it so I have a a couple interesting numbers for you tonight Steph is up to uh, twenty two hundred and fifty four minutes on the season the last time he played that many minutes two thousand eighteen nineteen wow when he was. 29 he turned or he's 30 years old sorry he will undoubtedly end the season uh at over 24 or 2500 minutes the last time he did that was 2016-17 KD's first season there's a very realistic chance he ends up playing the most minutes since he's played since his unanimous MVP season I do think fatigue is a massive factor for him. Uh, and I think you made a strong case to me. I don't actually think the rules are the limiting factor here. I think it's a combo of he's. Did you automatically mute yourself, I think? Or did you mute on accident? I don't. Yeah. So I don't actually think it's the rules. I think it's a combination of he's a little older. And this is the worst roster he's ever played with. Or not ever, but like the worst roster he's played with during this run. Uh, and so one has to, because like you could make the case if he had a viable number two, uh, if he was in LeBron's situation with Anthony Davis. Sure. Would he look as old as he looks right now? I don't think so. I think you'd have someone to rely on on a consistent basis. Uh, as opposed to every night, like we're, we're talking about Andrew Wiggins and he was spectacular tonight, but Andrew Wiggins is averaging under 14 points per game on the season. And even if Wiggins was playing up to his best, he's an 18 point per game guy. He's a, I chug along, I play good two way basketball and every third game, I give you 22, you know, yeah. he's not like, he's not like a, give me the ball. I'm the guy tonight kind of guy. Clay Thompson is no longer that player. So I, I I really do think the biggest driver of this is you're putting way too much on a dude at 36 at this age. I, I actually don't think he's worn down by any capacity uh, other than uh, the realities of dealing with his age. So Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's not an optimal situation, but then we say all this and any any any. Plays a bad game tonight and the Warriors win. Now, more often than not, that doesn't happen, but 
if they're going to put this type of, of defensive effort together, um, it, it can be sustainable. And, and keep in mind, I think Wiggins out, I'd be sorry, Kaminga's out tonight. He, he supposedly is going to be back on Thursday. So maybe that takes a little bit of an offensive load off of Steph. Mm-hmm. But again, they're playing great on defense and Kaminga's not been a good defensive player. So that'll be interesting to see kind of what happens um, with that on Thursday. But uh, hopefully that helps them. I, it should, especially offensively. I pull up the standings, but for those listening, I just want to bring this point home. First place, Denver Nuggets. Uh, they have three 25 plus point scorers, guys uh, <laughs> like Jamal Murray, Michael Porter, and obviously Jokic. Uh, Minnesota Timberwolves. Ant's been amazing, but for the duration of the year, he's had Carl Anthony Towns to rely on. Thunder goes without saying, Shea, Jalen, Chet, like those are three guys who can. Via you know can fill up the scoring sheet. Clippers, I don't need to go into Dallas, Luca and it. Kyrie. Yeah. Pelicans, uh, Ingram's hurt now, but he hasn't been hurt most of the year. Ingram and Zion, Kings, Fox and Sabonis, Suns. I mean, come on, you know, Lakers, yeah. LeBron, and AD, and then you look at the Warriors. It's Steph, uh, goons, and it's. No one you'd really put on the same level as any of the names I listed there, at least not offensively. Not like I'd rather have Draymond or Wiggins than Sabonis for defensive reasons. But when we're talking about pure offense, Sabonis but, you, you, but you're is talking a much about better you, offensive player, even you know? so as a player. Yeah, I mean, just like yeah. Yeah, Sabonis is available, right? Rudy Gobert is available, right? They've been playing all year. I think that's also the thing because, like, let's say if if Draymond's played all year like those guys, then then like availability is the issue with the warrior second player with Draymond. Right. And then you talk about the other second players like clay and, and Wiggins different issues, but with Draymond, like let's say he doesn't get suspended and doesn't ever get ejected. Where are the warriors? Right. Probably 45 wins. Same as the Pelicans. Right. So I, Mm -hmm. I, I I do think that where, where you, where you look at other teams, like Gobert doesn't miss games. He's just in the, he's just playing every game. He's awesome. Even though he's, You know, we, we make fun of him, but like he every game he's great, like so stuff like that. So um and say so, same with Sabonis. Like if you're talking about regular season, like rather have Sabonis than, than Draymond. Just I mean, imagine someone like Sabonis next to Steph. Yeah, it's maybe easy. it's it's not it's not the perfect, it's not like the optimal long term fit, but they would just rack up regular season wins. Rack up, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, I was um and then the last point I wanted to bring out, you mentioned Kuminga's back Thursday. He didn't play tonight. Missed the last week with tendonitis. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think I lost my camera. Apologies, guys. <laughs> I hear you fine. Uh, you're good. Yeah, you're good. Uh, how much? What do you make of Kuminga's absence right now? Like, yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a little. I yeah. He's, they say he's back. Right? I think Slater reported he will be back for sure. So that thank mm-hmm. goodness, because man, if he sat any longer, I, I really would be, I, I would really be concerned. So, um, no, I, I think they need him. Uh, offensively, I, I think they, uh, pods look great tonight. We didn't even talk about pods. Uh, and I'm sure the goons will once we get to them. But um, um, they're finding just enough offense right now without him. The only thing I'm concerned about is like. You put Trace Jackson Davis with Wiggins, with with Draymond. That's a really damn good defensive starting lineup. And uh, I mean, Kaminga's defense is not good, man. So so I just I just you know we'll see we'll see. I like it TJD does, in the starting lineup. I really do. It lets Draymond roam, and it's awesome. It does. Um, one to your point, yeah. TJD is not a traditional center in the sense he's seven feet tall, but he is a center like by trade. Like he knows his role. He's a center. It works. Yeah. And uh it, it I don't want to say it it speaks to let's just say Kuminga needs to do a little more in terms of generating winning than just scoring <laughs> because they're on a five game winning streak without him. And I'm not I'm not here to say he's bad or he's overrated or anything like that, but like two things that stand out without him being absent is they play better defense. Uh, and uh, no, that's the main one. I, I was going to say the offense makes more sense. Like in some ways, I don't know. I, know, if the I knew what is you better wanted to go him. with. Yeah. I know what you wanted to go with. Yeah. 
Yeah. But then they also, but the offense kind of doesn't work without him too, right? Because it, it no, gets all it doesn't. Way, it I mean, the offense doesn't really work with him either, though. Yeah. So. <laughs> it's the defense, though. End of day, it's the defense. It, it really is. Like, if this team can't play defense, they're not a serious team. I, I don't. I don't care how many points you score. Truly, do not. And this is why tonight, this is the Warriors' best effort mm-hmm. because they, they the, the, the Mavericks have won how many games in a row, Sam? Before this game. Seven. They've been they've been the Eight? hottest team. They've been the hottest team in the West the last right. I don't know three weeks or so. Yeah, yeah. they've been excellent, Good and point. and they are and, and they are excellent. And I still think they're better than their seed, you know. But like, yeah, big game. So I, I do think defense is the biggest thing. All the offensive questions are less relevant than Kuminga playing up to his physical capabilities on defense. So I'll be curious how it comes back. Yeah, when he comes in, because I thought he actually played really good defense. Uh, in December when he started game minutes, but the last couple of months it's not been there. And you know, that's kind of a problem. Yeah. Anyway, All right. let's get, let's get to the goo. Actually, you know what, before we get to the goons, one if you want to call in before Andy speaks here, press the button on playback. If you're watching on YouTube, join us on playback and we will take your call. Light Years Podcast, brought to you by Unified. Whether you're a world-class athlete or a podcaster like us, we all understand the importance of mental and physical well-being, proper recovery for top-notch performance. Unified Healing is a new and super innovative global network of wellness centers powered by an energy enhancement system, or EE system. If you haven't heard of EE system yet, you'll want to listen up. This technology promotes wellness, deep relaxation, purification, and rejuvenation. Whether you've been here in the Bay Area or hundreds of other locations across the globe, access to a center is easy and and affordable. Interested in experiencing the EE system technology for yourself? Go to unifiedhealing.com slash light years to learn more and find a center near you. That's U-N-I-F-Y-D healing.com slash light years. No material or testimonials on the Unified Healing website are intended to be viewed as medical advice or a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Always seek the advice of your physician or other qualified healthcare provider with any questions you may have regarding a medical condition or treatment and for undertaking a new healthcare regimen, including the EE system. Nice. All right, we got we got a long line of goons. We're going to move fast. I'm going to lead off with... Uh, we'll go with Ebony. Ebony always brings the vibes. What's up, Ebony? What's up? How you feeling? Pretty, pretty darn good, man. I mean, <laughs> you know, uh, it was funny because like third quor- the third quarter starts and I'm like, all right, good talk. That was fun while it lasted. Let me come back down to earth real quick. And then um, it just pops off, man. Like Draymond gets the block on Gafford, who's like, a bona fide like rim protector and like shot creator around the rim and you watch him block that shot and you're like all right well we can't ever trade Draymond so back to that conversation GP2 looks like he actually wants to play and like he's not injured anymore so that's fun and interesting and is promising for the next you know, at least for the next few weeks. And, you know, hopefully it stays that way. Um, CP3 remembers how to shoot. So that's cool. Uh, Pods. It was rough watching him. Like, I think it was the third quarter. He like drove into the lane like two or three times and just like turns it over. And so that's rough. Like, you know, he's a rookie and stuff. So it's like, eh, whatever you can live with it. Cause he's just trying to build momentum. But, I think Wiggins just like trying on defense, like he always shows up for the Mavericks. Like if he's not going to play for anyone, any other team, like play against them or put in effort, he's going to put in effort against Luka. And he's like one of the few dudes in the league that can guard Luka. So, you know, kind of goes back to that conversation. Can you trade Wiggins? Um you know, because he can guard him. Who else on the team is going to guard him? I mean, Clay, you know, kind of, maybe. That's a good point. If he's in the mood for it. But, um, yeah. And then uh, I just wanted to mention, this is the last thing. The Bucks lost to Washington tonight. And they <laughs> I saw, are I was literally imploding. 
Wow. Like, it's kind of unfortunate. I mean, they didn't have Dame, but what difference would he have made, really? So, wow. yeah. They really awkward. did. Wow. I, I, You know what? Great call, Ebony. Appreciate yeah. it. Wow. Y'all have a good one. Have a great one. That recap just caught caught me up on the on the. Are you? Uh, let, let's do ten seconds on the Bucks. Okay. Right. In theory, none of this should matter when the playoffs come around. They should be in the Eastern Conference Finals, a minimum, right? Wow. But yeah, I I know you feel the same way I do. I watch them like I don't know. I don't. Know, I'm just. It's. I'm not buying. Well, not buying. You know, you can say that about the Denver Nuggets because the Nuggets can turn the Jets on whenever they want. The old school Warriors could turn the Jets on. Sure. It's like the Bucks are trying to figure out how to play together. You, you can't it, you can't turn the Jets on when you you're not you're not good enough to do that and you haven't shown that you are, right? So I, I just I, underrated I get it. underrating Drew, making him the fall guy. Giannis low key kind of LeBron ish. Kind of just like plays like he's cute in front of the camera, but blames everyone but himself. And it's not working for him, just like LeBron. That's why hey, LeBron man. has four championships only, despite being the greatest player of all time. All I, all I know is like you shot 40% against the Celtics. Oh, but no Middleton. It's Steph lit them up in the same fucking playoffs. You might not be as good as people think. Just going to say it. All right. Enough. Uh, I think one thing before we get to the next person, uh, mm-hmm. uh, the Wigan stuff is interesting um, because it, it is like, you know, he's not been good for the whole season. And then all of a sudden, man, how do you trade him when he's by far your best defensive player that plays over 30 minutes a game? It's a question worth asking. Unless you I mean, bring someone in. Draymond's, Draymond's your best defensive yeah, player, right. but you need right. a, a, a perimeter guy and he's yeah. your best perimeter guy. So yeah. I, I do. It, it is. There is this assumption that Kuminga will get there, and maybe he will. Maybe he will, but he's not there yet. Sure. Hey guys, can you hear me? What's up, Ertash? Can Are you hear me? Yep. Yeah, we can hear you. Yeah. Uh, first of all, thankfully they finally won a game against a good team after I moved to the East Coast. It's been a struggle <laughs> staying out there. Why oh, you watching. moved out there, huh? Yeah, okay. yeah. I'm in mean, Virginia. But anyway, uh, speaking of Wiggins, I almost had tears in my eyes watching him guard Doncic because, like, it really he turned back the clock to 2022. Um, I I just had a thought that um, outside of Draymond playing defense, I don't think I enjoyed anyone else playing defense like Wiggins does when he's locked in, especially on Luca and even on Tatum, like when he did in that series. So there's that. So I'm really glad he finally. I don't know if it's this is going to last or not, but honestly, it's just so much fun watching him play defense and just watching the entire Warriors team play defense. Like the rotations were so much on point. We did give up a couple of three point open three pointers, but other than that, like it was just it was honestly just like back to 2022. Like someone just turned back the clock. Even the series, like Luca was looking like the Luca from the 2020 series. Like and um, yeah, and one last thing I wanted to say is um. I think, or second last thing rather, um, regarding the JK versus Wiggins versus Draymond talk, honestly, if you have noticed, Wiggins looked great when Draymond was out or JK was out. JK looked great when Wiggins is out or Draymond is out. And Draymond is Draymond. So, like, it does seem to me like those three are occupying pretty much similar places, especially at least on defense or, yeah. like, in terms of, like, how the offense goes. So, uh, we definitely may have a decision to make uh, going into the offseason. Like, we probably know we do. So, and finally, I think uh, Luca. I don't know. It, Mavs don't look like a good team to me, honestly. Because, like, they have two heliocentric players. I don't know. Kyrie can maybe play off-ball. And Luca apparently has worked on his off-ball skills. But, honestly, I don't see them winning a championship playing like this. Unless one of them gets... I mean, the only time a two heliocentric guys have won a ring, I think, is when Heat played with um, Wade and LeBron, but Doncic is not LeBron, so unless he gets there, I don't Yeah, LeBron and Kyrie, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, yeah, LeBron and Kyrie too, that's fair. But again, it's LeBron, that's... To me, that's exactly, that's exactly, that's, like, that's kind Doncic, of point. Doncic, unless he gets to LeBron's level, I don't know how they're going to win a championship. Well, like, that, the, the thing with me, the thing I, I, I've hit on this before is, is, like, he could be on LeBron's level offensively, but LeBron was elite defensively, man. Like, and, and Luca. 
like people would like what like to throw him in that conversation. I, I've seen that kind of carrying team. It's like, dude, he's not good defensively. And LeBron wasn't just wasn't just good. Yeah, he was all time. Offensively, but man. I think even the, the other thing is LeBron physically is more dominant than Luca. So like Luca is going to get tired trying those step backs throughout like a four game series or seven game sure. series. Like just like it happened with the Warriors. So like obviously I'm not saying every team has a Wiggins or a Warriors level defense. So he, he may end up winning one. But honestly. Just doesn't feel like it doesn't feel like with that kind of heliocentric. Or, or you just play in the East Eastern Conference, like that's the other thing. Yeah, like LeBron yeah. played in a Joe <laughs> Conference, like he just slept walk. Are you sure Dallas wouldn't win the East today? Exactly, exactly. That's, that's I mean, like, Celtics might the East is, the East is better now. Defenders, right? The is East it? Is, the East is better now than when LeBron played in the East. Like LeBron yeah. had to go through what fucking Demar Derozan. You guys was pissing shit down his leg. I mean, I mean, he was playing in the East. They're you still just I mean? going. Through DeMar DeRozan. <laughs> What's that? They're still just going through Demar Derozan. But yeah, <laughs> well, I mean, uh, Damian Lillard. Well, no, Demar Derozan was like a one-two seed back then. No, no, no I'm just I give you a hard. It's just, it's just LeBron. LeBron. I'm, I'm saying LeBron's better, but at the same time, uh, I forgot. As I'm making that argument, like that Eastern Conference was a joke. Like they they would coast through that East, and the the Warriors have to go through like three title contenders. You know what I mean? Yeah, so, maybe so. I'm just Warriors biased because like probably a defense that's not as good as the Warriors may they may able they may be able to get past them. So I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Who knows? Appreciate yeah. you, Paratosh. Have a great evening, my man. We're gonna be just. Dis- is this uh is hey, that to dis- discuss uh if San Jose is in the bay again? No, man, that's already settled. We don't have to be <laughs> I, What's uh, up, man? Nothing much. Good night. They ended up winning a good game. Um, I want to get to your point about uh fatigue and step. So okay. I think I think you're right. I think he's tired. Like this game, I watched this game and I was like, there was a little bit of like Gappard's an elite shot blocker. He got some shots blocked. He was he so every once in a while Steph will get into a little bit of like a foul hunting mode. He took a couple of those like floaters where he was trying to like hunt for a foul because he felt some contact and it wasn't a good shot. But like I don't worry about 30. Like he had seven rebounds, seven assists, two blocks, a steal. Like he cares. Like I want everybody else to be like playing really well going into the play in. But what I want to ask especially because <laughs> I, I honestly want an NBA investigation about other teams colluding to make sure Warriors can't climb the standings because we cannot move up from 10. Like every single time, like the Suns or the Kings are playing somebody and it's like, oh shit, Murray's out that game. Oh shit. Like, um, like it's every wild, time, isn't it? it was Kawhi missed the game tonight against the Kings. Like I, I'm a reasonable person. I feel like when it comes to my sports fandom though, I'm like, completely like in conspiracy theorists but all of that to say like we're three games back on phoenix and like i would love to like avoid playing the lakers in that first game in the plan but i'm not seeing a path so much anymore and so my question to you guys is especially because we were talking about fatigue especially for steph we win this game on thursday against the rockets with the tiebreaker we're what four or five games clear of them like, yeah. what are your thoughts about, like, resting Ooh. some of these guys, especially Steph, going into that play-in? Because, honestly, right now, like, they could play it out, and they have the path to get in front of the Lakers. But, like, how much do you ride these guys for the home court in that play-in? Like, what is a better, like, strategy? Is it, like, resting these guys? And, and I know momentum is really important, too. Like, they're playing really well right now. Hell but, like, in terms of, like... I, I'm just curious what the coaching staff is thinking right now about that because I'm sure they're looking at the standings. And, and I'm curious your guys' thoughts on that. I like it. So the Phoenix Suns play the Cleveland Cavaliers tomorrow for context. I'm, I'm pulling up the schedule as we talk about it. And I think you got to give it a couple more games to see where everything plays out. And – if it looks like there's very little chance you can make progress, you might as well pull everyone in the last week of the season. That's that's where that's where I'm at with it. Well, uh, I think the problem is that if you do that, you're playing a one and done, and you risk the chance of being out of rhythm 
especially sure. if you're Steph and Clay, who are jump shooters. Really, Steph really is so much more a jump shooter at this point in his career right now. Is like you don't want him to come in and all of a sudden he's trying to shoot his way back into rhythm and 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 he's five for fifteen going into the fourth quarter, right? right? But then you can also make that argument like, well, he's exhausted and tonight he went five for eighteen because he's tired, which is what I think is the case. Um, so I, I think maybe maybe you sit that Pelicans game like as you're looking at the schedule, the Warriors have a back to back on on Thursday, Friday. And then the, and then against the Jazz, like maybe you sit him against the against the Pelicans, and then you play him against the Jazz, right? Just to get him that that one game of rest, um, so he's not playing a back to back before the final game of the season, and then you play that. So I, it's a great question, man. I I think like what are you really fighting for now? If they're fighting for to get an eight seed, I think Sam brought it up where it's like now they get two two bites, right? To yeah. make the playoffs, and obviously you don't rest guys. Like you want to get the eight seed, but. If it's a ch- difference between a nine and ten, I think the comment brought comments brought this up too. Like, I mean, they play better on the road than they do at home this season anyway. Like, it doesn't, I mean, it doesn't really matter. Chase is not doing anything for them. <laughs> they don't play any better at Chase. They play worse. I'm mostly curious about the Phoenix Suns. That's where I'm at. The Suns play Cleveland tomorrow. Cleveland is in a dogfight for seeding. I'm assuming they're playing their dudes, and then they play the Wolves on Friday. Another team who's in a dogfight. Uh, and then they play the Pelicans on Sunday. There's a realistic chance the Suns drop all three. And even if they drop two of them, the the Lakers will probably pass them. So I, I think it's too early to make those proclamations. But if we get into middle of next week and it's clear they can make no movement, you might do it because that playing games on Tuesday, uh, the final games are Sunday, the 14th of April. Uh, the playing games start on Tuesday, the 16th. So it comes pretty quick. Uh, I, yeah, I, I, it's, it's, let's revisit this in a few days. Let's revisit yeah. in a few days. No, uh, I get cool. it. It's, it's maybe a touch too early, but it's like, I feel like part of the reason why you don't want to be in the play in, obviously, is like twofold. It's like one, two extra games when you're in the nine or 10 scene just to get into the playoffs, which is like mm-hmm. for a team like this extra sure. mileage on their legs just puts you at a disadvantage, especially when you're going to end up playing like maybe OKC, which is all young athletic guys, but like resting beforehand kind of cuts against that. Because like, if you look at the teams at the top, OKC nuggets, Timberwolves, like they're right on top of each other and they're going for it. Like it's a dog fight. So like, can you maybe like build in a bit of a rest advantage because, yeah, I mean, I don't think the coaching staff and the team is thinking, like, we really hope we can just beat the Lakers. Like, they're hoping to get into a playoff series. But to Andy's point, you're right. It's like a one-off. That's the other reason why it's like to be in a play-in. And the more I watch this team, because I actually feel like they're starting to play good, it's really frustrating because I'm actually, like, pretty confident that, I don't know, if, like, a Denver or an OKC, they'll win a series if they end up with one of those matchups. But, like, I feel like this team could do well in a seven game series, but like the variance of like a one game elimination, like I'm terrified. Sure. But like, that's why I'm so frustrated. I'm like, man, if they could get into a series, even with a team that maybe has more talent than them, like I feel like they could actually make a good showing at the very least because of the way they're playing. I just, again, if it's a one off against the Lakers or even like the Suns, like Booker went off for 52 the other night, like, that could happen because you just catch them on the wrong night. So to Andy's point, it sucks because it's like a one-off. Anyways, guys, I'll leave, Appreciate it, you, my man. I'll leave it at there. I just want to also shout out because everybody's talking about great defense on Luka. Moody played, again, fantastic defense. Second game in a row. I'm basically going to start calling Moody Luka stopper like Ruben Patterson because he seems to have like a good knack for specifically guarding Moody or Luka. So anyways, want to like shout it. that out. Mm-hmm. I like it. Appreciate it. We didn't talk about Moody enough, honestly. He gets a playoff time and Moody gets back in the rotation. I don't know what this is. Steve, like, fucks with him in the winter and then it gets his spring. It's Moody season, you know? That's pretty good. It's pretty good. Well, we'll see. I mean, is Moody going to play on Thursday? Should. Uh, he, he Kaminga's back. Just saying. Steve, Steve's the only coach in the NBA who wants a bunch of wings but doesn't know how to play wings together. Oh, they're not Andre Godala. Yeah, bro. Sorry. 
Sorry, you can't have wings with guard skills at all times. Sometimes they're just wings. Sometimes they're just oh, wings. That's really what it is, right? Like, because Andre, Andre was like uh, pods offensively uh, in terms of trustworthiness, but he's also uh, Wiggins' physical build and defensive profile. Yeah, so. it really, really is. I, I would like to. It's good to see Andre, his three point. Good to see his three point shooting come back. That's what it is. Yeah, yeah. Let's get our guy Gio up here. Gio, if you start dooming, I'll kick you off the stage. Don't you doom on me. Hello? What's up, man? Can you hear me? Yeah, what's up? No dooming. I'm not. I mean, I mean, I was, I mean, I was going to do. I mean, well, I was going to talk about staff. Like, is, is that really dooming? I mean, I don't know. Like, I mean. I don't know. Like he kind of—I mean, he kind of looks like kind of looks kind of washed. I mean, I'm just gonna say. <laughs> Here we go I mean, again. <laughs> it's not the shooting. It's the fact that honestly, he, honestly, he just like looks dumb out there. Like, cause like, like he just makes me bad bad decisions like all the time. It's, it's kind of sad to watch, honestly. Like, like any time a team puts like a big wing on him these days, he just like I don't know, like I don't know, just like. Bad passes doesn't really do anything much. Like he looks, I mean, he looks. I don't know, man. Uh, it's kind of sad. I mean, that's 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 it. That's it. That's yeah, it. That's that's all it. you got that's on tonight's it. game. That's all you got on I mean, tonight's well, game. Well, well, here's the thing, right? Chris Paul played well, so I can't really hate uh, Chris Paul because he kind of. That's right. He hey, hey us. just I need I need you to say thank you, point God. I'm sorry. I'm not saying that, bro. I'm <laughs> I, I like me. I'll thank never you. thank you, know you point God. Thank you, you point God. It's all, it, dude. It's always fuck Chris Paul to the end of the other. Fuck Chris Paul. Number three. Me. Oh, please. please. Oh. Number three. You're with me. All right. Gotcha. <laughs> Joe, <Jill, laughs> appreciate you. Never happy. Never truly happy. That's okay. Yeah. Not everyone needs to be happy. Gotta love it. <laughs> not everyone needs to. Not everyone needs to to be happy all the time. All right. What's up, man? What's up? What's up, guys? Yeah, yeah, last time I was on the show, it was after the New York game, and we were pretty much like shitting on Wiggins. And you know, with, with Wiggs, it's it's like it, it's it's not about the offense, you know. Like, like you know, in a nutshell, for fourteen points a game, it probably isn't good enough. But 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 it's but it's fine. But it's always been the defense with him, right? And like the the effort ha- hasn't been there like for the majority of the year. But it has shown up in the last couple of games, and and, and this game, I think, I, I think he gets up for Luca, sort of like he gets up for LeBron as well. So I mean, I mean, it, it was a great, great game from him, and like I think Andy hit the nail on the head at the uh, at the top of the show. Like the Warriors are sort of built on defense; they they aren't really they they aren't built for their uh, on their offense as much. Like even even during the like the championship years, right? And I mean, Clay was known more for his defense than his three-point shooting. To be to be completely frank, and you know, like, and that's why if when JK comes back on Thursday, I don't want to change the starting lineup. I I, I like the way it's going, uh, and I vote for defense over offense. So that's just my take. And yeah, I mean, uh, piggybacking on like this, like the schedule question. Um, I think so. Somebody went and wanted to go over the schedule, see where the Warriors yeah. would rest and all that. Like, how, where do you guys see the Warriors finishing? Uh, when it's all said and done, will it depend on the rest? Will it depend on how other teams do? Um, yeah, I just wanted to get you guys' thoughts on that. And uh, is the Mavs game pretty much a throwaway game because of the back? Ooh, appreciate the call, my man. I do think the Mavs game is probably well, let's put it this way. I I think the Suns playing a back to back today or sorry Wednesday and Thursday will tell us if the Warriors want to go for it against the Mavs on Friday or not. If Phoenix lose, loses two in a row, all of a sudden, yeah, I think that eight seed is what they got to go for. All of a sudden, you're like a game back, and if you're game back, it, like it, who has yeah, a tiebreaker? If you if you can get to eight. The Warriors have the tiebreaker over the Lakers, but the Suns have the tiebreaker over the Warriors. The Warriors. That's mm-hmm. so that's that's annoying. Yeah. But yeah, if you can, if you have a shot at eight, you have to go for it because two games is better than one. 
Yeah. Right. Yeah. But and, and do they do, do they figure that out on Thursday? Do they do they know on Thursday? No. The sun. It's too early. It's lost twice in a row. Probably. I think they're going to go for it against Dallas on Friday, no matter what. I think Friday. if we get to next Thursday, and there's like they might just rest everyone the final two games. And Andy could be right. That could be a huge mistake, but I don't know. Well, a lot to be de- a lot to be determined over the next like week or so. That's kind of where I'm at with it. I don't think they're going to make any decisions uh, Thursday night, though. Yeah, no. Appreciate you, man. We'll take one more and then we get out of here. A new caller. Oh. Or someone who changed their username. One or the other. <laughs> How you guys doing? Good. What's up, man? I just got a quick question for you. Um, sure. Out of, the, out of the teams in the bottom, is there a team that you would prefer to, to face in the play? <laughs> Kings. Kings. I, I'm going quick. I think the Kings are self-destructing. I think the Warriors own them mentally. That's got to be my number one. Uh, curious your guys' thoughts, though. Anyone but the Lakers probably is, is the easy one. Um, I think the Lakers are a terrible matchup for the Warriors. It's pretty obvious. Everything that the Warriors try to do doesn't really matter. LeBron becomes an all-time three-point shooter when when when, when he plays the Warriors. is super annoying. Uh, so Adam Silver throws on that so, that purple and gold too. It would it would be Adam Silver's <laughs> worst nightmare if if that nine ten was Lakers Warriors. Um, yeah. But I, I, yeah, I mean I, I'm with you. The Kings. I I don't think the Suns are a bad matchup. Honestly, I, they're they're another team that like think about the Lakers. They can play some defense, uh, and they've got and they've got AD. And, and what are the Suns doing? I mean they're they're a joke on defense. Um, um, their offense is kind of just a, a heavy diet of bullshit. And just mid range jumps. Like, what are we like? That's not look, man. They, they could beat the Warriors, they'd probably be favored, but like, that's not it's not a not an impossible game to win. I, I just think the way that the Lakers play, you're not you're not beating the Lakers, you're not in a one game in the one game format 2 0 this year. 2 0. The who Warriors against the Lakers. That's not demons true. have been exercised. Oh, it's two and one. True. Sorry, I already d- deleted the one. <laughs> They're undefeated oh. in the games I want to remember. They they have one more right that they have one yeah. more right, next week. Um, I just don't think that's a good matchup for the Warriors. But yeah, I mean yeah. if it's a one game, right? Two, I mean two we're gonna... if you don't count the losses. It's true. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's but you know to to the caller, I mean the real the real answer as Warriors fans sitting here for the last decade watching this team, if it's one game, like you, you just it's Steph, it's Steph, it's Draymond, Clay gets hot. It's still those three guys. It's one game. Like you can you can make the argument as a Suns fan you don't want to play the Warriors, Lakers fan you don't want to play the Warriors, right? Like, uh, like being a if you're a LeBron fan or a Laker fan, like this whole season now you're you got I do think still on the second half now you get Steph, now you get Steph and you could he could just go forty five and you're going home, right? I do I do think from a order of best to worst case in terms mm-hmm. of your best odds, Kings, Suns, Lakers. I think you beat all three, but. If you were to tell, ask me what is the yeah pretty easily scenario that gives me the most confidence, that's it. That's it. Yeah, you know. Yeah, Pelicans aren't dropping, right? Mavs aren't dropping. I, I don't think like it's not possible. I, I, it possi- it, it's possible, but it's unlikely. Yeah, I kind of feel like it's yeah. probably rather play the Pelicans if they somehow drop, but that's fine. Like Ingram's not playing right, to, but any like those, you're right that those are the three. Man, the Kings are a mess. I actually kind of feel and that's kind of also by the to be clear, that's why you want to get into the seven eight game because you're likely to get one of the teams you feel better about than like, all right, we're going to L.A. So what well, the the first time <coughs> the Warriors? How many times have they played in the play in game? They, they just once. The just once. right they they beat. Where were they? The ten seed or the nine seed? They They're beat the eight the seed. They're the eight seed. They were the the they lost to um they lost the Lakers and they lost the Grizzlies. They beat the Grizzlies the game. Oh, to get in to yeah. the play in. Got it. To get in. God. Yeah. What a sort of God, that season was disgusting. Um <laughs> oh man. Mm-hmm. All right. We'll be back post rocket.